here's TCG here and welcome to another TCG video on my channel. As you know, on my channel we check out uh, the latest TCG news and best new decks in town, so be sure you are subscribed so you don't ever miss out. In this video we're going to talk about the top 20 best cards from the new upcoming set Lost Thunder. This set will be officially released worldwide on the 2nd of November and today we're going to talk about what we can expect and what uh, are going to be some promising cards to make new decks with. This is going to be in chronological order uh, and uh, this is my opinion so if your opinion is different or you think I forgot a card or you think the card is better be sure to go loose in uh, of course the comment section below. Without further ado let's uh, dive straight into this list. Lost Thunder is one of the biggest sets, it's actually uh, the biggest set in the Pokemon. Pokemon TCG history, so uh, it's going to be a top 20 instead of just a top 10. Okay, number 20 is going to be Chuckle. And no, I'm not talking about Chuckle GX, I'm talking about the regular Chuckle. Uh, this is just a basic Pokemon uh, that has 60 HP, which is perfect. That means we can get it out with Professor Elm's lecture, and uh, it's going to be great. Not only that, it comes back with the crazy ability Juice Extractor. If you're a fan of Battle Compressor, then uh, you'll uh, uh, yeah just instantly fall in love with Chuckle because uh, it has the, that ability once during your turn when you play this card from your hand onto your bench you can just search your deck for up to three uh, basic energy cards and discard them then shuffle your deck afterwards so uh, the attack it also has here is uh, attach two basic energy cards from your discard pile to your pokemon any way you like so it's actually kind of good uh, the ability is going to be very useful in decks of course like um, the alone executor decks uh, that uh, i actually took to a league cup uh, last weekend so the thing here is that uh, you can just use chuckle and uh, you can just get those energies in the discard pile really early in the game not only that it can work with things like mullet uh, which uh, uses Psychic Transfer, getting energies from the discard. Well, Chuckle can get those energies uh, in the discard immediately. Not only that, uh, if you just get, discard all those energies, you can also make use of things like Turtonator GX, things like uh, the uh, Zera Aura GX, is a GX move. So there's a lot of things possible, of course, with this little Chuckle. So that's why it flies in at the number 20 spot. Number 19 is going to be the Fairy Charms. And uh, the thing here about Fairy Charms is that they... Uh, are very good tool cards. Those tool cards uh, can be attached to uh, one of your uh, Pokemon and uh, it prevents all damage done to your fairy type Pokemon that this card is attached to by attack from your opponent's uh, yeah Pokemon of choice. So you have three fairy charms and uh, actually four fairy charms. You have one that uh, reduces the actually uh, prevents the damage done to it by uh, grass type Pokemon. So that is great because grass is going to be very relevant in uh, this uh, meta game with things like Sapdile Jacks and stuff. More on that later. So you can uh, reduce uh, actually uh, prevent the damage damage uh, by, from grass type Pokemon from the opponent uh, by psychic types so you have the psychic fairy charm you have the grass fairy charm you have of course the fighting fairy charm and then of course the the dragon fairy charm so you just uh, think about the popular Pokemon that are being played right now Rayquaza, Boswell, uh, Mullamar variants well these three types already got covered by these fairy charms and that means you can of course prevent damage uh, if you're playing a fairy type deck think about Gardevoir think about uh, Sylveon well if you have this uh, attached to uh, that fairy type you can just uh, prevent all the damage very 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 powerful in a yeah sylveon deck because you can rely on magical ribbon to get those uh, tool cards of choice out uh, the bad thing is that it only flies in at number 19 because I do think that uh, Field Blower will see an increase in plays uh, as uh, we uh, move on through the future and uh, this can easily get played around. Not only that, Field Blower gets rid of the tool card, so it, uh, I think it's only the, the number 19 spot. Also, if you look in Japan, uh, it hasn't seen that much play as of yet, so uh, yeah, maybe uh, the United States and the European players will uh, be uh, totally different on this tool card, but I, I think it's only at the number 19 spot. Moving forward, we have Macargo GX at number 18. And uh, Macargo GX is kind of uh, interesting because it pairs so well with the uh, existing Macargo from Celestial Storm. This Macargo GX has the Crest uh, Charge ability. Once during your turn, you may discard the top of your deck. If that card is an energy card, you can just uh, attach it to one of your Pokemon. It has to be a basic energy card. So you can just uh, use that smooth over ability of the uh, Macargo in Celestial Storm, put an energy on top, then uh, Macargo can use this ability to, ha to have energy as acceleration. This is uh, just perfect as it fits in uh, with that uh, Pokemon. Not only that, you can just run uh, like four Macargo GX and four uh, Smooth Overs. That could work because they don't have the exact same name. I don't suggest uh, using that uh, split line of that uh, amount of cards, but it, it can work since they don't have the exact same name. And now to the attacks. It has the Lava Flaw uh, dealing uh, 50 damage and you may discard any number of basic energy cards from this Pokemon. And then you deal 50 more damage. So if you discard all of them, you deal 200 damage. And let's say you get multiple Macargo 
car goes out, well, you can just uh, recycle uh, those energies back again because, uh, of course, you can rely on things like energy recycler to just put the cards back in the deck, and the cargo with smooth over can just put it back on the top of the deck so you have energy acceleration. It also has the Magma Burn GX, very interesting GX move. Discard the top five cards of the opponent's deck, so with disruption, it's kind of bad. There's also a Durant in the set that works with uh, discarding the opponent's deck, and uh, yeah, milling has always been kind of a fun thing, but uh, I think um, cargo will be mainly used for the ability to accelerate energies or just to as a main attacker with lava flow. Moving forward, number 17, now we're gonna talk about Chuckle GX. Chuckle GX is an interesting GX Pokemon. It does have 170 HP, which is very, very fine. I thought uh, Chuckle wouldn't have that much of HP, since, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's just uh, kind of bulky if you can say it like that. Uh, oh, 170 might not seem a lot, but uh, if you include the ability that it has, it's definitely great. It prevents all damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon with two or less energies attached to them. And that's very great, because they'll need three energies at least to just dish out damage against against Chuckle GX. There is, of course, uh, things like uh, Zora GX, which is very popular still, and uh, that uh, requires like a DCE. Well, they cannot hit uh, Chuckle GX at all. They will need an extra energy to do that. And uh, you can just uh, make a, uh, maybe a disruption deck with crushing hammers, enhanced hammers, plume arena, that kind of stuff, and just uh, make sure that your Chuckle stays alive turn after turn. Not only that, it comes back with two uh, attacks that only require a carless energy. That means you can just uh, rely on things like, uh, yeah, you can just splash it in any deck. You don't need the grass type energy for or Chuckle GX. Triple Poison. This is the first attack. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. Put three damage counters instead of one on that Pokemon between turns. Pairs kind of well with Surviper, which we've seen from Crimson Invasion, if I am not mistaken, to add uh, that damage up even higher. So you can just, uh, yeah, poison the opponent turn after turn. As uh, you know, in this format, things like Acerola and Guzma make it kind of hard to rely on special conditions. But of course, for a colorless energy, we cannot complain since we are untouchable by uh, the opponent's Pokemon if they only have two or less uh, energies. And uh, in this format, there might li be like a problem here because there's a lot of energy acceleration going on. We have Molomar, which can stack up energies. We have Magnezone, which can stack up energies. We have Vikavolt, which can, which can stack up energies. So the bad thing is that Chuckle might go down, but in a stall deck with, of course, the right uh, item cards, this might even work. Not only that, we have Wrap GX, 40 damage, and uh, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. So you can uh, keep them stuck in the active if they don't rely on Guzma, which is kind of great. So I do think uh, we might see some niche picks for our Chuckle GX decks in the future. Moving at, at number 16 as the mascot of the entire set is going to be Zero Aura GX. This uh, is a card I already talked about in full detail on the channel, so I'm not gonna go uh, yeah, uh, over it again, but as a quick little summary, it's very great. It uh, brings free retreat to your Pokemon that have lightning energies thanks to the ability. It smacks 160 damage with Plasma Fist, and uh, then you cannot attack next turn, but with uh, cards like Guzma, you can evenly, evenly just get uh, rid of that side effect, because if you go to the bench, the uh, effect gets reset. And of course, it comes back with full Voltage GX attach five basic energy cards from your discard pile to your Pokemon and anyway, like which means it pairs really well with the chuckle I mentioned earlier on the number 20 spot so chuckle and a zero aura maybe we might see them in a deck popping up not only that zero aura GX is going to be the perfect partner for a quasi GX although fairy type Pokemon uh, as mentioned before uh, is going to be see an increase uh, increase in play which means Rayquaza will be kept in check but uh, if you're not afraid of fairy or if your local area doesn't play any fairy type Pokemon you just can rely on uh, a straightforward Vikavol Rayquaza deck with one card of zero Aura GX in there. Very, very nice card. I do love the full art as well. Moving forward is going to be Septal, and I'm gonna cheat a little bit here. I'm gonna talk about Septal and, of course, Groovile at the same time. First things first, let's talk about Groovile. Groovile has the ability Sunshine Grace. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for a grass type Pokemon, reveal it, and put it in your hand. So, pretty, pretty much like Shinodic we've seen from the Sun and Moon base set. And uh, this is kind of neat because Groovile can get your uh, Septal out immediately, or maybe your other deck cards like Lorentz's promo card to dish out extra damage. Septal GX comes back with an attack that only requires one energy. Mash Cut, which deals 60 damage, and you can just discard a special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Very, very great against, uh, of course, Zoroark, because Zoroark likes to rely on double cards energy, and in a format without Puzzle of Time and Special Charge, getting rid of special energies is like pretty much putting them in the loss zone. The only thing that can grab back the uh, energies are things like a Diancie, uh, uh, actually not Diancie, a Dianta for Fairy decks, things like an Oranguru with the Research Management, and uh, things like Banette GX, or maybe Sidua GX to use Hollow Hunt GX or the Tomb Hunt GX. So uh, other than that, if the uh, special energy goes to the discard, it's gone forget forever. So 
very nice attack. You can just power that up with Laurentis promo to dish out more damage, things like Choice Band to hit more damage for a single energy. That is going to be very great. Not only that, it's second attack, Leaf Cyclone deals 130 damage and you can move a Grass Energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. So uh, just uh, before it sees the discard, you can just get one energy from this Pokemon back to one of your bench and go in Cyclones, as it mentions here. Uh, Leaf Cyclone 130 is a perfect number. It gets rid of Shining Lugia, Baby Boswell, Dalmice, you name it. It's a very, very great attack. And with things like one Laurent is on the bench, you can just hit 150, enough for even things like Fight. So uh, a very great Jax card over, overall. It also has Jungle Heal Jax. Heal all damage from each of your Pokemon with a Grass Energy attached to them. And that is for a single attachment. So uh, for a single Grass Energy. So I think there's a lot of hope for Septile Jax. Uh, in the near future, definitely if we can just uh, pair it uh, with that amazing Growbell. I know Rare Kennedy plays might even be better, but if you just get a Growbell, your uh, deck uh, just circles around because uh, you can just rely on that ability every single turn. Okay, uh, next up is going to be number 14 and that is going to be Grand Bull. Grand Bull is an interesting Pokemon, even did very well in Japan recently and why is that? Well. For starters, it's a 130 HP Pokemon with a resistance to darkness, so uh, Zoroark GX will need a Devoured Field and a Professor Kukui to hit a one-hit KO on this guy. Not only that, it just comes back with the most crazy attack ever, Dead Broke. It deals 30 damage and if you have no cards in the hand, you deal 160 damage instead. And this deck is going to be paired with things like Oranguru Instruct, no supporters at all, and uh, things like Apricor Maker to just get your things like Nazball and timer ball and whatever the hell you want to play and uh, that means you can just uh, empty your hand turn after turn after turn and uh, if that happens you just need a single attachment and then boom grand ball smacks for 160 with choice by 190 so uh, i do think uh, grand ball is kind of that uh, one price pokemon we all dreamed of one energy attachment has uh, not uh, enough hp and it uh, does very well in, in the current meta game okay Moving forward, we're gonna talk about uh, some Prism Star uh, Stadium cards because this set seems to be a uh, uh, yeah, uh, team around these new Prism Star Stadium cards. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is Heat Factory Prism Star. Heat Factory Prism Star is one of those interesting uh, things like uh, a blast from the past because it reminds us of, of course, Scorched Earth. Uh, not only that is the exact same thing, but Prism Star Stadiums cannot get field blowed away or cannot get be removed by uh, supporters at all. So that means the only thing that can replace a stadium is another stadium. So the thing we can do here is that once during our turn, uh, we can do that every single turn if the stadium is active. Once during our turn, each player can do that uh, actually. So uh, you can just discard a fire energy from your hand and then draw three cards. This is going to be very great in fire decks. If you are uh, playing a fire deck right now, think about Reshiram, ho oh Sub Lazzle, maybe the upcoming Blacephalon, which we're talk about uh, sooner uh, on the channel sooner or later actually it's going to be on the list as a little spoiler so uh, yeah and a fire deck is going to be a staple uh, as consistency uh, just think about the ability trade of Zorak very great draw power well this is a stadium card that does uh, it's a little bit uh, like a trade and a half <laughs> very very great stadium card moving forward another stadium card that's great is going to be for lightning type uh, decks it's going to be Thunder Mountain Thunder Mountain Prism Star as long as the stadium is in play, eh, you, uh, each player's uh, lightning type Pokemon, their attacks cost one lightning energy less. Wow, that is fantastic. That means, of course, uh, Zero Aura Jax can use its Jax move for free. Not only that, Zero Aura Jax can also use its, uh, uh, yeah, what was it again, that attack for 160 for only two energy. So uh, one uh, lightning energy less is very, very great and uh, will only become better as soon as we get more lightning type Pokemon like Ampharos Jax, which will be in the February set, but more on that later. This is all about Lost Thunder, so as of yet, I think the stadium card belongs, of course, at the number 12 spot, but could change in the future uh, if we get better lightning type Pokemon, but uh, definitely great. Uh, having to pay one lightning energy less is very great, reminiscing, of course, of the uh, stadium card and, of course, what that was it? The... Let me just think about that. There was, this, yeah, Dimension Valley. That is also, uh, that's a huge amount of play. So I do expect Thunder Mountain Prism Star to just uh, see that equal amount of play. And that was, of course, in the Phantom Forces set. So my memory is still uh, <laughs> recuperating after a long, long weekend playing, of course, with Leak and Leak Up and become, uh, become uh, actually, it became second with Alone Executor. So anyhow, uh, we're gonna move on, of course, to uh, the yeah, 11 card. I'm actually gonna cheat a little bit again. It's going to be Giratina's spell. Uh, this is going to be Giratina under the, the spell tag. 
First things first, Giratina and has the ability Torn Door. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in your discard pile, you may play it onto your bench. Then put one damage counter on two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So spreading damage is a thing. We have Flying Flip Coco, we have Shrine of Punishment. Uh, this is going to be a thing here with Giratina. You can just uh, put damage counters uh, around and uh, it also has kind of a neat attack, 130 damage. You have to put four damage counters on one of your Pokemon, but that doesn't even matter uh, because uh, 130 damage for three energies is, is fine for a one prize attacker. And uh, with things like, of course, Flying Flip, this deck is going to perform very well. And if Giratina somehow sees the discard, you can use Rescue Stretcher and do, do use, it, use that ability again. Not only that, we have Spell Tag now. Spell Tag is a tool card if you're going to uh, rely on spread, play four copies of this. If uh, the Psychic Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. That is very, very disruptive. Think about, oh, you bench a Giratina, two damage counters. You bench another Giratina, two damage counters. You uh, get knocked out, four damage counters. You're flying Flip, Shrine of Punishment. Yeah, you know the drill. You just put a ton of damage counters in play and uh, this is going to be a very nice deck. It actually won the, uh, the League and uh, Japan. So uh, I think it was a very, very big tournament with over 1,000 players. So this is going to be a lit combo. Why is, only, is it only at the number 11 spot? Well, in Europe and uh, the United States, we like to play, of course, with Zoroark. It is weak to darkness, and uh, we also run maybe more field blower counts. I don't know. I do think uh, there are way better cards than the Giratina spell tag, although the Japanese people made it work, but it's not that successful since only one of the players got so far. All other than that, uh, we're going to talk about some more interesting cards in this list. Okay, now we're going to the top 10. Uh, we already uh, covered a lot of cards, but now the best cards are uh, about to be revealed. Are you guys ready? The first card on the list on the number 10 spot is going to be Counter Gain. I know Counter Catcher sees a kind of a, yeah, a niche amount of play. We have Counter Energy and now we have Counter Gain. This is a tool card and as long as you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, meaning the opponent is uh, yeah, in a winning game state, <laughs> the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to cost one carless energy less. What does that mean? This is very, very, very great. Why is that? Because now Lycanroc GX, if you're behind in prize cards, can come out of nowhere with a dangerous rogue GX. This does not even state that it has uh, that you cannot use it for GXs. Well, you can use it for GXs. That means uh, Lycanroc GX can use its GX move for a single energy, but more Pokemon can use uh, attacks for one card as energy less. Think about uh, maybe a deck without uh, even uh, playing any kind of energies. You can use Counter Gain on things like Weavile of Burning Shadows in order to use that Rule of Evil for zero energies. It's fantastic. So I do think this Counter Gain will have a kind of a niche play in a lot of decks. So uh, sometimes you say, like, oh, I need one energy too much. And well, with counter gain, you can just make it work. I think uh, a lot of people will try it out. So counter gain is going to be on the number 10 spot. Next up is number nine, Zubstrika. Do you remember Octillery? Well, Octillery saw a huge amount of play in a lot of decks and Zubstrika I think is going to be uh, in the same category as Octillery. Zubstrika, the ability phase, uh, fast break. Once during your turn, you may discard your hand and draw four cards. Do you realize what that means? And it's uh, on a format without things like Sycamore and heavy draw support. Well, there's going to be uh, some draw support coming, but more on that later. But you can just discard your hand and draw four cards. That is not relying on a supporter. That means you can discard your hand, draw four cards. And if you're hunting for that Guzma on the last turn of the game, this is going to be Zip Striker that can bring it out. Because discarding your hand and drawing four cards means you have the most aggressive draw support uh, Pokemon in the format. And that uh, will help you in a lot of decks. Okay, not only that, as mentioned, uh, if you're playing a lightning type deck, you can even attack where, for a single carless energy if the Thunder uh, Mountain is in play. Awesome, right? Next up is going to be number 8, Netball. I actually fell in love with Netball uh, because uh, I actually uh, recently was testing out Jump Love against a friend and uh, Netball is a fantastic card. It searches your deck for a basic grass Pokemon and a grass energy. Reveal it and put it in your hand. So it's basically like if you're playing Nest Ball in the grass deck, scratch them all, Netball is the way to go. Netball is very powerful in things like Tapu Bulu. You can get your energy, you're grabbing. Fantastic. And Rayquaza, you can get an energy and of course your Grubbin. And with that energy, you can use a first turn Tempest GX. No more you have to wonder like, do I get the grass energy? Well, no problem. You can get the grass energy and a basic uh, grass type Pokemon. So in every grass deck, play a lot of copies of Netball. It's fantastic. Number seven, Sightseer. Sightseer is a fantastic card. It's going to be our new kind of Sycamore in a way because it's an aggressive draw supporter. You can search it out with Lele if you need to and uh, it lets you discard as many cards from your hand as you like and then you can draw cards until you have five in the hand. 
let's say you have a, a bunch of death cards that you don't need and you actually played out your hand well you can just discard all the rest draw five that is very great but compare that with things like a lily where you can just draw cards until you have six uh, and uh, a couple of turns and in the beginning lily is way better but this is way more versatile because you can discard everything that you don't need if you definitely that desperately want to draw a lot of cards not only that uh, i think a lot of uh, decks like molomar will love this because Getting things in the discard can be uh, beneficial. You can just get your grass energies in the discard. Maybe you want something else in the discard. It doesn't even matter too much. This is a heavy draw supporter and uh, we're in dire need of draw support. Next up is going to be electric power. So uh, electric power. I thought this was only coming out in February, but I guess I was wrong. And this is going to be way better when the February set hits because a lot of uh, electric type Pokemon will come out here which is uh, going to be awesome. Even a new Zapdos card in February, but we're gonna stick around with the November set. And Electric Power, during this turn, your uh, Lightning type Pokemon's attacks deal 30 more damage to the opponent's active Pokemon. Pretty much like a Choice Band, but it's better than a Choice Band because you also hit that extra 30 damage against things that are non-GXs. And not only that, it's an item card, not a tool card. That means you can just smack down an Electric Power, attach a Choice Band, use something like a Sightseer, use another Electric Power, and out of nowhere you can just hit an attack for a bazillion amount of damage with your Lightning Pokemon. This is going to be very, very, very great with Ampharos GX, which can just recover all those Electric Power uh, energy, actually uh, item cards. But uh, more on that later. So for now, it only flies in at the number six spot, but we come way better because as we've seen before in the TCG scene, doing more damage is always great. We had uh, things like uh, Expert Belt, saw a huge amount of play. Muscle Band, saw a huge amount of play. Choice Band, saw a huge amount of play. And the early game Plus Power, saw a huge amount of play. So even uh, the Crobat, uh, yeah, the Crobat, just uh, when you snap it down, damage, damage has always been good. Modifying damage is amazing and Lightning type decks will enjoy Electric Power. Moving forward, it's going to be one of my new personal uh, favorite decks, Lost March. If you love Night March, Lost March is pretty much the same thing, but you just put Pokemon in the Lost Zone. And I, I'm going to cheat a little bit here on the number 5 spot. I put actually like a thing or cards like 5 cards here. <laughs> We're going to first talk about Jump Lift here. And uh, Jump Lift is amazing. And why is Jump Lift amazing? Because you can just go into Jump Lift immediately. Jump Lift is a stage 2 with 70 HP. Now you might think, well, Zapdos, you're losing your mind. That HP sucks. Well, I hate to break the news to you guys. It's going to be fantastic. Why is that? Lost March is an attack that deals 20 damage times the number of Pokemon in your Lost Zone. And now, look at the Skip Loom that it comes with. The uh, Skip Loom has the ability Flower Bridge. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for a Jump Lift and switch it with this Pokemon. Place the Pokemon and all cards attached to it into the Lost Zone. So pretty much... We have Netball getting your hop ups out. The turn after that, we evolve into Skip Looms. Bam, 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 bam. Skip Looms in town. Then uh, we can immediately go into the Jump Lift because uh, once during your turn, just to get out your Skip Loom, you can immediately uh, rely on that ability. Go into Jump Lift. There's two Pokemon in the Lost Zone already. Do that for every one of your hop ups. Evolve to Skip Loom. Get to Jump Lift. Get a bunch of cards in the Lost Zone. And then you'll be, be dealing for a single energy a lot of damage. Not only that, Jump Lift has a free retreat cost. And then, of course, uh, things like Natu. There's a not to in the set, which also comes back with the Lost March attack. This for a DCE does the exact same thing. 20 damage times the number of Pokemon in your Lost Zone. And with things like Trumbeak, we have a Trumbeak in the set. I know it's a stage one. I don't think we're gonna run a uh, picky pack, whatever. Don't run that. Just run four copies of Trumbeak and that Lost March deck because it comes back with the Mountain Fairy ability. Once during your turn, if this Trumbeak is in your hand, you may put it in the Lost Zone. If you do, look at the top card of the opponent's deck, then return it to the top of your opponent's deck. If that card is a supporter, put it in the Lost Zone instead. So you have Disruption, you can put Trumbeak in the Lost Zone to get extra damage with your Lost March attackers. And of course, there's a, it doesn't stop there. We even have an item card, Lost Mixer. Put two cards from your hand into the Lost Zone, then draw one card. Draw support, check. Pokemon in the Lost Zone, check. So Lost March will be one of the biggest decks coming out of Lost Thunder. I only put all these cards combined at the number five spot because they're actually my top four. It's kind of a must because uh, from testing, I realized that there's a bunch of things possible. And uh, here it comes, the top four spot. Number four, we have Elm's Lecture. Do you love Bridget? Did you play in the era where Bridget was around? Do you miss it? Well, it's back. Sort of. We have Professor Elm's Lecture. Search your deck for three Pokemon with 60 HP or less. Reveal them and put them into your hand. You don't have to bench them immediately. You can just put them in the hand. And that uh, also does not spe specify basic Pokemon. I, I, I don't know if you saw this, but Skip Loom had 60 HP. That means you can also get Pokemon out, stage 1s, whatever, that have 60 HP. 
Uh, this is a fantastic uh, supporter card. Tapule, Professor Alm is going to be something we are gonna adore. And things like Zoroark decks, Guard of War decks, Lycanroc decks. I could keep going, but this is going to be amazing because you can just get out uh, three Pokemon with 60 HP or less. That means people will be running the 60 HP uh, Rock Ruffs because that can just be searched out with Alm's Lecture. So very, very great supporter card. And uh, I uh, love to see a card like this back because I've missed it. I played Zoroark, Lycanroc for ages and uh, now uh, this is going to be one of those uh, four offs, or actually three or four offs in the deck, so you can just start immediately with an Elves Lecture and get your setup. So uh, we're very, very glad this card is uh, coming in the Lost Thunder set. And now, the number three spot, I'm going to cheat again. What am I doing? Well, there's way too much to cover, and uh, in this video, you get all the perfect information about the, the meta game. So this is going to be Blacephalon GX. I know it reminds us of the uh, clown and uh, the movie It and stuff, and uh, even like uh, Popsicle, whatever. It is a uh, Blacephalon GX comes back. I actually did a, a separate video about this card already. Check it out in the description below. The link will be there. Uh, it has the attack Mind Blown, which will blow your mind. It deals 50 damage, and uh, you can just uh, for every uh, fire card you decide to put in the Lost Zone, you deal 50 damage. So Mind Blown, very powerful. Reminds us, of course, on the Lost Burn attack of the Magma Zone Prime back in the day. It's the exact same thing, and uh, the reason that this is going to be on the number three spot because it pairs so well with Naganadel. There's a baby Naganadel coming out and uh, this Naganadel has the charge up ability. Once during your turn you may attach basic energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. So that means you can just get a bunch of Naganadels in play, let them attach all those energies from the discard pile which you put in thanks to Heat Factory, Prism Star, Ultra Ball, uh, Mysterious Treasure and all that good stuff. And then you can just put those energies in the Lost Zone thanks to the Mind Blown Attack. Because uh, the Mind Blown Attack does not specify that you have to uh, just put energies attached to Bless Up Flon GX in the Lost Zone, but either all the, po all the energies attached to uh, your side of the field. So you could just uh, put whatever you want in the Lost Zone. It has to be a fire type energy. And 50 damage for every energy will uh, be an easy one hit KO potential and just destroy everything that you come uh, in your way. Well, everything that comes in your way, you can just one shot. Not only that, we have Nagadal with the turning point dealing 80 damage. And if you have exactly three prize cards remaining, 160. So sometimes Nagadal can just one shot, and other times you can just one shot because you're a psychic type hitting weakness against the Chroma GX, Boswell GX, and more. So a very, very uh, nice Nagadal. And not only that, the Blacephalon also comes back with a nasty GX move. Discard one of your prize cards, and uh, if it's an energy, attach it to this Pokemon. Other than that, you just put it in the Lost Zone. If it's a Prism uh, energy, or uh, if it's a regular card, put it in the discard pile. So just get rid of one of your prize cards. That means you only have to, ta have to take five prize cards early game, and uh, maybe late game, this could also work. So Blacephalon and Nagadal combo at number three. But what could be better than that, right? We already talked about the Lost March deck, we talked about Blacephalon Nagradal, we talked about Giratina Spell Tag Combo Spread, we talked about Septa, what could be around? Well, on the number two spot we have Ditto Prism Star, 40 HP basic. Yeah, that's right, 40 HP basic on the number two spot, and why is that? Well, this is just evolved into everything, this ability is huge. During your turn, you may play a uh, stage 1 evolution card from your hand onto this Pokemon to evolve it, excluding your first turn uh, and uh, the turn that this Pokemon comes into play. So, that means you have Ditto in the active position or in the bench. Well, if you just wait a turn, you can just evolve into everything the following turn. That means you can just have uh, stage 1 tech cards. Let's say you're running Zorua Lycanroc. Zorua Lycanroc. <laughs> I'm still uh, just uh, returning to that deck. It's, my, uh, it's a classic, you know? So, that means you can just have 5 Zoroas in theory, because Ditto can evolve into Zoroark GX, or you can just have multiple Rockruffs. It can evolve into the whatever you want at the perfect situation. Do you want to target something with Bloodthirsty Eyes? You can just evolve into Lycanroc. Do you want to have a Zoroark out? Well, you can just evolve into Zoroark GX. So Ditto can just be anything you ever want it to be. Uh, things like Molomar. Let's say you're running a Molomar version. You want five NKs, no problem. Ditto can be that NK for you. So uh, that's why I'm putting it in here, because I do think a lot of decks will try out that fifth basic, uh, technically, because that can evolve into everything and that it's going to be uh, my number two slot for the Lost Thunder set. And now to finish uh, the deal here, we're gonna have the best card of the entire set. Could you guess it? It is Alola Ninetales GX. Probably one of the most expensive cards that will come out of Lost Thunder. Why is that? It's go going to be crazy good. Everything about this card screams very, 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 very solid. We have the uh, ability Mysterious Guidance. When you play this card from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may search your deck for up to two item cards and then you just reveal them and put them into your hand. 
this pair so well with a lot of decks. Think about Boswell Lycanroc. What, did you ever wish that you just got your P strings at the correct time? No problem, Alolan Nightas is here for you. Not only that, Brooklyn Hill can get out your Alolan Voltex at no D-Tech Beacon for zero energies, so that's good. You can just put that in that deck. Let's say you are running a stage 2 deck and you always whiff on your rare candies. No, there's not a problem anymore, Alolan Ninetales can do the trick for you. Let's say you just want to play Zoroark, the Sejuai once again. No problem, P rely on Professor Elm, boom, get maybe a Ditto Prism Star, whatever. And evolve into Alolan Ninetales, bang, you get your rare candies, you can evolve and you're good to go. Not only that, you can just uh, just pair it so well with Alolan Vulpix with Beacon. You use Beacon, the one from Guardians Rising, put two Pokemon in the hand that could be a Tapu Lele and an Alolan Ninetales Jax. The turn after that, you evolve, bang, you get your items out, Tapu Lele and stuff, and your deck just rolls with it. So not only that, there's also Custom Catcher in the set, I forgot to mention it, but it's also very good if you have have two of them in the hand you just can just target everything you possibly want of course uh, just like a Lysander would and if you have one in the hand draw cards until you have three in the hand so basically like an, an instructive or a guru so the thing here is that uh, this item card can work also very well with Alolan Ninetales so that's why I'm putting it in here as well and getting everything you want from an item card let's say oh I need a choice band for the knockout boom you evolve you get the choice band. oh I need to switch to get out of the active boom you evolve you get the switch so there's going to be a lot of decks playing a lot of Ninetales jacks just to have a lot of uh, uh, versatility you could just put a lot of one-off items in your deck and uh, just uh, evolve and just see what you want not only that it comes back with an attack snowy wind dealing 70 damage and this attack does uh, 30 to one of the opponent's bench Pokemon pretty much like the Night Spear of Darkrai but a little bit lower uh, and damage output the one from Dark Explorers and then uh, with a choice band you just uh, destroy uh, Rayquaza so Rayquaza won't be seeing a lot of play uh, uh, when Lost Thunder has because a little Ninetales will be in a lot of decks for consistency purposes uh, let's say oh my god I'm dead drawing you evolve into a little Ninetales get your Ultra Ball with Ultra Ball you can get Tapu Lele and off you're rolling back again consistency is key in every trading card game and a little Ninetales brings that very nicely we have Sublimination GX this is where the card even shines more did I just mention that Bocephalon will be huge? Baby Boswell is still huge. Boswell Jax will see a combo with Lycanroc. Well, here we have the Sublimination GX. If your opponent's active Pokemon is an Ultra Beast, boom, it is knocked out. Duh. That is your GX move. You can destroy Ultra Beast for just two energies. Or if you're playing Counter Gain for a single Fairy Energy or Unit Energy or Rainbow Energy, you can just destroy Ultra Beast. Think about what Ultra Beasts are being played. Dusk Mane Crows, my Jax. One shot it. Ultra Necrozma Jax. One shot it. Darwin's Necrozma Jax. One shot it. Boswell Jax. One shot it. Blacephalon Jax. One shot it. I could keep going all day long, but you just get the point. There's a lot of uh, popular uh, Ultra Beasts being played at the moment, and uh, with the things like Blacephalon being popular, a lot of Ninetales will be at the peak of the uh, top tier uh, yeah, meta because it brings consistency. One shot Ultra Beast and one shot Rayquaza. What else do you want in a card? So, this is going to be my top 20 uh, cards. Actually, there was more than 20, but you get the point. Cards of uh, the Lost Thunder set. Be sure to let me know in the comment section what your favorite card of the set is. Uh, on Saturday, there's the pre-release. Expect a video about that. I'll be opening a bunch of packs and talk about the new art and the new cards as well. And uh, that will be it for this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, be sure to demolish the like button as always. Subscribe for more Pokemon TCG content. And uh, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic rest of your day, guys. I'm out. Peace.